sure that the webcams are actually turned off if you don't want them to be on. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi nabiyya al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-mustafa muhammad. Wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin la siyama baqiyatillahi fil aradin ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu al-sharif. Allahumma akhrizni min zulumat al-wah. وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم الحمد لله we have to free to have our session this is our first session in the month of رجب and also in new year for us in Iran you know according to the solar calendar so we have now entered the year 1397 after Hijrah. So this is uh, no rules uh, holidays you know, in Iran right now. So we have to thank Allah for giving us life to witness another year and to be able to carry on with our pursuit of knowledge inshallah. We said that in this chapter which is chapter 9, we study some of the references to the successorship to Imam Ali, successorship of Imam Ali, according to the Quran. We already studied the first one, which was the ayah about Wilayah, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ and now we want to carry on with the second uh, groups of ayat which establish a very important Quranic concept the concept of Shahid or Shahid witness uh, we normally use Shahid in the sense of martyr that's correct but uh, Shahid in the Quran uh, either all the time or most of the time means witness indeed martyrs are called shaheed because we believe that they are alive and they witness what we do as you know according to quran there are four groups of people four categories Sometimes they may overlap. There are four groups or titles that are at the top of humanity. You know, in Surah Ham, we say, "Ehdina sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-ladina an'amta alayhim." Please guide us to the right path, which is the path of the people that you have bestowed your blessings upon them. So this is their path, this is the path that they have taken. We want to be given guidance to be on that path, to join them. So they have already made the journey, they are on the path, but ahead of us, we want to join them. <coughs> so these are very important people. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم. إن سورة النساء verse sixty nine. Allah says ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك Rafiqa, those who obey God and the Messenger, they would be with the people that Allah has bestowed His blessings upon them. So, when we say we want to be with them, so if you want to be with them, you have to obey Allah and the Messenger. Then Allah mentions who are those people that Allah has blessed and. من النبيين والصديقين 
وَالشُّهَدَا وَالصَّالِحِينَ Prophets, most truthful people, witnesses, and righteous people. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ الرَّفِيقَ And they are, these are excellent companions. Very good people to travel with. Because they are travelers, we want to be able to join them in their journey. They are already in front of us in this path. But although we are much behind them and lower than them, but they are very moderate and considerate. Rafiq from Rafq. Rafq in Arabic means moderation, to be considerate. Uh, you know, friends you know, also are called Rafiq. But the root is this, because a friend is someone who is very kind with you, very considerate when you are tired, you know, when you are sad, when you are happy. So behaves in the way that suits your condition. Doesn't expect too much, doesn't, you know, exhaust you. This is Rafiq. So it's very good to be in the same path that these people are there and choose these people as your guides, as your um, co-travelers. Okay. Now let's focus on the concept of Shuhada. So as you see, it's very top group of people. Shuhada is the plural for Shahid. Shahid means witness. The Quran teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for every generation of people a witness with them. This witness has different functions. One is that people by following him, by listening to him, by following his example, they understand what is right, what is wrong, how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's a kind of a standard bearer, a role model, an example, a hujjah. On the other hand, this witness is witnessing whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we think, whatever we are. We are mu'min, we are kafir, we are munafir, we are selfish, we are jealous, we are kind, we are virtuous. So this witness is living with us and witnesses everything. And on the day of judgment, Allah will call them, will bring them and ask them to offer their testimony. For example, if you look at this ayah, وَيَوْمَ نَبْعَثُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا Surah 16, verse 84 وَيَوْمَ نَبْعَثُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا ثُمَّ لَا يُؤْذَنُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَا هُمْ يُسْتَعْتَبُونَ The day we would raise from every nation a witness every nation a witness will be brought will be raised from them and that witness will offer his testimony after that then no excuse will be accepted from the people who rejected and resisted and fought against the truth and they will not be receiving any favors. So the focus is on the first part of the ayah. Also, if we go a few verses forward, the same surah, surah 16, but verse 89. The previous one was 84. We go to 89. وَيَوْمَ نَبْعَثُ فِي كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ The day we would raise from all nations, all peoples, a witness against them from amongst themselves. 
So he's going to offer his testimony about them, and he's from them. So this cannot be an angel, because it says, Mena nufusahim. So it cannot be an angel, so it has to be a human being. So the, these ayat show that among people, there is a human being, that this human being has so much of knowledge that he can see through the hearts and minds of people and see what they believe, what type of traits of character they have, and then can offer his testimony. وَجِئْنَا بِكَ شَهِيدًا عَلَى هَؤُلَى And for these Muslims, you are the witness. So every ummah has witness. And people whether who are good members of ummah or bad members of ummah, this witness is going to offer his testimony about them. But for these people, you are the witness. وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ تَبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا للمسلم. In chapter 4 verse 41, again we have the same thing. <coughs> for every nation is a witness and you are the witness for these people. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ بِالشَّهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ الشَّهِيدًا How will it be when we bring from every nation a witness and we bring you as a witness to them? <coughs> so, for every group of people, every generation, bad or good, there will be someone that would be presenting values, ideals, is a standard bearer, but at the same time, he would be seeing and witnessing whatever people do and say and think and are. He offers his testimony to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has a dual job of explaining to people, but also reporting back to Allah what people have done. And Prophet Muhammad is the witness for Ha'ula. Our Sunni brothers have accepted normally this much. But when it comes to the question of what about witness or witnesses in this Ummah or in this generation, then there is a disagreement. Many Sunni brothers, they say that Rasulullah is witness from his time till end of dunya. They say this haula that we have. Jana bika shahidan ala haula, verse eighty nine, chapter sixteen, or wajana bika ala haula shahida, verse forty one, chapter four. They say this haula does not refer to the Muslims and Kuffar of the time of the Prophet. Those that Prophet was contemporary to them. They say Kaula means those people and any people who come later till end of dunya. Rasulullah is a witness. So in addition to Allah being witness, in addition to angels being witness, in addition to our bodies, you know, the different parts of our body to be witness, in addition to all that, we have a human being in every generation that who would be a witness and then would offer his testimony on the Day of Judgment. And many Muslim brothers, they say that Rasulullah is the witness for Ummah, and Ummah means Muslim, non-Muslim, till end of the dunya. But it cannot be an angel because it says, Min anfusihim, and they say it is Rasulullah. Now, our question is, is Rasulullah the last witness and for all generations or Rasulullah is followed by other witnesses? Certainly for every group of people there must be witness. But is Rasulullah to go in for all generations or no? We have some verses in the Quran that explain that one person 
can be witness as long as he lives among people. So Rasulullah is witness, but he should be followed by another witness. And then that should be followed by another witness. These witnesses should come along with the passage of time and coming of different generations. A very beautiful ayah for clarifying this issue and supporting our argument is Ayah 117 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Chapter 5. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به This is a conversation between Jesus, Isa, Allah, Nabi, and Awali, alayhi salam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah asked Jesus, أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِ يَأُمِّيَ إِلَاهَيْنِ Have you told people to take me and my mother as your uh, Lord, as your God? Then Isa, alayhi salam, says, I have not told them except what you have asked me. What I have said was you should worship yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is your Lord and my Lord. I was a witness over them as long as I was with them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَيْءٍ So as long as I was with them, as long as I lived with them, I was a witness. But when you received me, because you know Allah received and raised Isa alayhi salam. إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَّافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ So after you received me and raised me, after that, you would be the, the only one who remains monitoring them. And you are a witness over everything. So as long as I was with them, I was also a shaheed. Now you are the only shaheed between two of us. Of course, there are angels, but they are not included in this discussion. We call it Hasra Ezafi. So there was a time that I also used to be witness, and you were also witness over everyone. Now I am not any more witness. You are witness. Kuntu alayhim shahidan ma dumtu fihim. Isa alayhi salam, although he is alive, although he has only been raised, he has not been killed, Allah has not taken his life away, he is alive, but still he says, I only was a witness as long as I was with them. And after that you are the only witness. So this shows that the witness cannot be a still witness after he leaves people, after he departs his people. So, going back to the question of the verses which says, Je'na bika ala ha'ula shahida, addressing the Prophet, Allah says, we bring you as a witness over those, these people. These people means people of his time. Rasulullah, in this technical sense, please remember, in this technical sense, Maybe there is another way that Rasulullah will be receiving a report. We don't want to go into that discussion. But from this technical perspective, that we need for every generation, a human being who lives among them and who would be showing them the path, who would be able to keep and preserve the book, the divine message, and also on the Day of Judgment will give report. This witness is not Rasulullah in our time. Rasulullah was witness as long as he was with people. As Isa alayhi salam said, Kuntu alayhim shahidan ma dumtu fihim. Falamma tawafaytani kunta anta raqiba alayhim. When you received me, you were the only one who was monitoring them. Wa anta ala kulli shayin shahid. You are witness over everything. So, now, we understand that there must be a witness after the Prophet or witnesses after the Prophet. Is there any further evidence from the Quran? Say so yes. Actually, although this is enough, but we have two very clear verses of the Quran to take us even further and shed more light on this. One is, if you look at page 122, uh, verse 17 of chapter 11. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَيَتْلُوهُ الشَّاهِدٌ مِنْهِ 
وَمِنْ قَبْلِهِ كِتَابُ مُوسَى إِمَامَ وَرَحْمَةِ Is he who stands on a manifest proof from his Lord and is followed by a witness from himself? So whom are you debating and refuting or trying to refute? Someone who has clear signs and evidence from his Lord and is followed by a witness from himself? So, Quran is clearly saying that Rasulullah is followed by a witness. He's not the last witness. Yatluhu shahidun minhu. And that witness is also from Rasulullah. Very beautiful. Yatluhu shahidun minhu. He's followed by a witness from himself. To be able to understand what is minhu, meaning, what does minhu mean? We should know that in the Quran and in Islam in general, when someone is 100% obedient, is trying to his best to obey and would not, you know, allow exceptions, would not disobey, would not rebel, would not commit sins, this person is counted as minu, as from the other person. It's not a matter of genetic or blood relation. Son of Nu, although was his son in its true sense, in its biological sense, he was his son. His DNA was in his son. But Allah says, Innahu laysa min ahlik. Innahu amalun ghayru salih. You know the story that when Nuh salam offered his son to come on board on the ship and said very kindly, Ya Bunayyar Kabbana, my dear son, come on board with me, with us. He said, Sa'avi ila jabalin ya'asimuni min al ma. I'm going to take shelter to take refuge. Where? By going on top of a mountain and it will protect me from water. But he said, La asim al Allah. There is no protector except someone that receives mercy from Allah. So this is the mercy of Allah offered to you. Accept it. In any way, when Musa, uh, Nuh alayhi salam, sorry, when Nuh alayhi salam saw his son is droning, he said to Allah, Rabbi ibn abni min ahli wa inna wa'adaka al O oh Allah, my son is from me and your promise comes true because Allah had promised to save his ahl, his people, his family. Then Allah said, innahu laysa min ahlik. Yes, it is true. We save your people, your ahl. But he's not your ahl. He's not from you. He's a vicious act. So, son of Nuh is not from Nuh. We have stories in the Quran that helps us to understand this. For example, the story of Tawud and Talut and Jalut, also the same about rich in that river. And they were told, whoever drinks from this river except little, then he's from me. But the one who drinks too much is not from me. Or I have also referred to the story of Mubahila to explain that Imam Ali was from Prophet because the idea was to bring Anfusana wa Anfusakum, Nisa'ana wa Nisa'akum, Abna'ana wa Abna'akum. So Rasulullah for Anfusana brought Amirul Mu'mini salam. So it shows he is from the Prophet. He has close relation with the Prophet. In particular, I wanted to refer to two beautiful incidents in the history of Islam which are recorded by our Sunni brothers in their major collections of Hadith. When the Surah of Tawbah was revealed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent the first Caliph to introduce, to declare this surah to the people of Mecca. And he left and moved towards them. Then Rasulullah sent someone, or some people, uh, actually he sent Amirul Mu'min alayhi salam, uh, but maybe there were some other people with him. So Rasulullah said, you go and declare 
and asked the first caliph to come back. Let me read for you from the text, and because these texts are um, very important, we have also put the Arabic original text in here in the footnote, and you can find them. And we have also ourselves checked these texts, so it's not that uh, they are cited from secondary books. For example, in Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, in Volume 2, Musnad of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and also Volume 1, Musnad of Abi Bakr al-Siddiq, we have this story. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'athahu bibbara'ah l'ahl Makkah. Rasulullah sent the first caliph with the surah of Bara'a for the people of Mecca and the message, main message was لا يحج بعد العام مشرك ولا يطوف بالبيت عريان ولا يدخل الجنة إلا نفس مسلمة No pagan would bring Hajj after this year and no one naked will do Tawaf because unfortunately one of the bad customs of uh, Jahiliya was to do Tawaf nakedly and in some sources say the reason was because they wanted to do some business so they said to people either you buy dress from Mecca for your Tawaf or if you don't buy dress from Mecca you have to leave your dress and do nakedly so people of course wanted to um, do tawaf with dress but if someone was not able to afford or was too expensive uh, they do it nakedly and little by little unfortunately this became like it's something ordinary or normal so and also if you want to go to he heaven you have to be faithful then uh, the message also included man kana baynahu wa bayna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muddah fa ila muddate if someone has also a kind of agreement with rasulullah and has a deadline to be observed uh, that deadline is observed it's respected that agreement that contract and then but after that then uh, the same thing would be applicable to them in any case uh, the first Khalifa went and then Rasulullah said ثُمَّ قَالَ لَعَلِي رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى an. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says that then Rasulullah said to Imam Ali إِلْحَقْهُ فَرُدَّ عَلَيَّ أَبَا بَكْر you go it seems that three days had gone. So after three days, he sent Amir al Munin and said, because he says, Sara biha thalathan. Thumma qala la ali radiallahu ta'ala an il haqqo. So after three days, he said to Imam Ali, go and find Abu Bak and ask him to come back, send him back, rodda alayya, send him back to me, Abu Bak, wa balligha anta. And you declare this Surah al Bara'ah. So he did the same. Amir al went and found Abu Bakr and asked him to go back and said, this is what Rasulullah said. I have to deliver the message. And Amir al went and delivered the message. Then when Abu Bakr came back, فَلَمَّا قَدِمَ عَلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَبُو بَكْرْ بَكَى When Abu Bakr came back to the Prophet, he cried. قال يا رسول الله هل قال يا رسول الله حدث في شيء has something happened about me for example anything about me has been revealed to you any verse or anything any issue do you have anything against me رسول الله said ما حدث فيك إلا خير according to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal رسول الله said no nothing bad has happened about you nothing has happened except good for you 
umirtu alla yuballighahu illa ana aw rajulun minni but i have been commanded by allah that no one should deliver this message except me or a man from me so rajulun minni was amirul mu'minin not other muslims not other companions although they believed in islam they followed rasulullah but they are not counted as minhu i have also mentioned here another hadith and the hadith says thumma ba'atha fulanan bi surat at-tawbah fa ba'atha aliyan khalfa rasulullah sent uh, abu bak to declare surah tawbah then sent ali alayhi salam fa akhadha min ali alayhi salam took the surah from him قال لا يذهب بها الا رجل مني وانا من رسول الله said no one would declare this except someone that he is from me and i am from him so you see quran says yatluhu shahidun min so first of all, we have to find a witness after the Prophet. Secondly, Minho, he has to be from the Prophet. And Minho means not any Muslim. Minho means someone who has been so close that like these hadiths suggest that it's only Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam who was Minho. Plus, there is no one in the Ummah other than Amir al for whom such position is claimed. Non-Shia have no one as a candidate to say that he had all the knowledge which is required to be a witness. It's only Imam Ali for whom such claim has been made. So either we have to say there is no one after the Prophet who could be witness or if there is anyone who could be witness as Imam Ali salam, because for no one a higher level of knowledge is claimed. The other ayah which is also important and shows that there was a witness after the Prophet is this ayah Surah 13 ayah 43 وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ الشَّهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ those who don't accept the faith deliberately and reject the, ter- the truth and faith, they say, you are not sent by God. You are not a messenger. To- tell them, Kafa It's sufficient that there is a witness between me and you. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is a witness between us. Plus, وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ there is also a human being who is witness. Allah is witness above us, and there is a human being also among us who is witness. And his characteristic is in the who ilmul kitab. He has knowledge of the book. So after Rasulullah, we have another witness. It's not Rasulullah is not the last witness. There is another one, and he has ilmul kitab, knowledge of the book. What is knowledge of the book? First of all, you should know there is a difference in Arabic between ilmul kitab and ilmun min al kitab. Ilmun min al kitab is some knowledge of the book. Ilmul kitab means knowledge of the book. It means much more. It's not just one aspect, one little knowledge. In the story of Prophet Sulaiman, and Hudud and the Queen of Saba. We have beautiful story about who is going to bring the throne of the queen. First, a jinn said, I bring it before you stand up. But then Allah says, But then Allah says, I am going to bring it to you before your eyes blink. Chapter 
27 verse 40. So just because he had ilmun min al-kitab, he had some knowledge of the book, was more capable than jinns. If jinns ne needed at least few seconds, he said, I will bring it immediately. So we are dealing with such type of caliber, ilmun min al-kitab. Let alone ilmul kitab. So who was the witness other than the Prophet that Rasulullah says, I have two witnesses. One is God above us and one is that witness among us who has ilmul kitab. Plus the Quran says, shahidun min is from him. So these all clear that this was Imam Ali alayhi salam. And we know that Imam Ali salam had greatest knowledge among the companions of the Prophet, among the Muslims. And here I have quoted from Sunni sources about the knowledge of Amirul Mu'mineen. For example, A'lamu ummati min ba'di Ali ibn Abi Talib. The most knowledgeable person in my ummah after me is Ali, the son of Abu Talib. Or ana madinatul ilmi wa aliyun babuha faman arad al madinata fal yat al bab. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Whoever wants the city should enter its gate. Or ana darul hikmat wa aliyun babuha. It's interesting that we are approaching the birth of Amir al Mu'minin. So reading these hadith from Sunni sources are very important. So. It is Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that he quotes this Or we have Ibn Asakir in Tariqh Madinat al Dimashq, and also we have in Hidayat al Awliya by Iswahani this hadith from the Prophet. Man sarrahu an yahya hayati wa yamuta mamati wa yaskuna jannata adnan gharasaha rabbi. Whoever wants to live my, my way of life and die my way of death and settle in heaven that my Lord has made it, fal yuwala aliyan min ba'di, wal yuwala waliyahu wal yaqtadi bi ahl bayti min ba'di. فَإِنَّهُمْ عِتْرَتِي خُلِقُوا مِنْ طِينَتِي And our point of reference is this. وَرُزِقُوا فَهْمِي وَعِلْمِي They have been given my understanding and my knowledge. So, who is there that has ilmu al-kitab other than Ali alayhi salam? There is no candidate. And we have also other hadith that uh, inshallah you will find there so basically what we want to say is that the Quran is very clear that with every generation of people there should be a human being who lives with them remember what Isa salam said he has to live with them he has to live with them the Quran says that Rasulullah was witness after him there would be other witnesses. In our time also today, there is a witness. In our time, Imam Mahdi Sharif is the witness. And Allah will bring him for all people that he lived with them to offer his testimony. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our understanding of Quran and to enable us to act in compliance with divine witnesses and to be able to have the pleasure of Allah and recommendation of divine witnesses, insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.